everybody and welcome to Flannel Jammies Farm. I am so excited today here on my little channel about cross stitch and bees and homesteading and my husband working at home on a ball. Um, I have the most special guest, my dear heart friend and um, fellow cheer enthusiast is Daleen Wilson and she is here with us right now. Hi, so grateful. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much. Isn't this if we haven't much? met yet, my name's Daylene, and I talk about cross stitch and my grandbabies and sewing and food, always food, and of course, what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for weirdly technology that we get to do this. This is the best, isn't it? I know. So if, you, if you don't know, I live in Virginia, on the very east side of Virginia, in Virginia Beach. And Daylene lives in Washington State. I live by Seattle, Washington. So I live clear on the other side. Yep. It's amazing. I, this it's is magical that we're friends. That's it wonderful. Yes. <laughs> we um, were brought together by this wonderful stitching community mm -hmm. and immediately became friends. And yeah. it's been a beautiful and blossoming relationship, one filled with joy and laughter and just lots of fun. Really? All true. Everything true. True, true, true. True. <laughs> so we wanted to share one thing with you today. Um, we both, as I said, love all things happy and cheerful and encouraging and, and wonderful and magical. And so Daylene, pardon me, floss tube nose, I should not, I need to like, excuse me, antibacterialize. Um, so Daylene has these beautiful banners in her house. And she told me about them. I'm going to have her show you hers and tell you a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, this particular banner is a happiness banner. And I don't think you can see it, but I made a little one so you can see it up close. It's about six and a half inches um, across at the top. Make it however long you want. And I just made it out of paper, uh, scrapbook paper that you have around the house. You don't have to buy anything. Nice. Um, you can just use whatever you have. It can just be plain white too. And I also have one hanging over my kitchen sink and it's made out of a fabric that's called chalkboard fabric. Oh. And you just sew it like regular fabric and then we just write messages with chalk on it. Oh, so it's really fun. fun. That's but fantastic. this might not be the time to find that, you know, but you have paper, any kind of paper that you have or something that comes in the mail, just use it. And then I just, we just lay, I lay it on the counter sometimes and then we all write words on it that make us happy. The colors of the soap bubbles. Ooh, my fig plant started a little teeny bud. So I had to write my fig tree. Uh, oh, one of my granddaughters, she's eight. She learned to sew yesterday. Oh my, I had to write that on there. Uh, ooh, okay, we have a text, a text group of our family. The only thing we put on there is happy things. We send jokes to the grandkids. They send us pictures. Um, it's, it's amazing. Oh, okay. Also, I made someone made cinnamon rolls is written on there. <laughs> uh, bouquet of balloons. I have a bouquet of balloons that's still hanging on out there. Um, I think that it just makes us happy to remind ourselves. It doesn't just happen. Above me are all these flags of grace and goodness, prayers. And so we try to surround ourselves with really uplifting, happy things. At Thanksgiving, I do thankful things that we're thankful for. And in this particular banner, I saw in a book where a lady used pom-poms all the way across it. So someday when I get back to the store, I'm going to buy some pom-poms to put across the next, the next banner. So I love it. Okay, tell me about your banner. Oh, so anyway, Daylene gave me this idea, right? It's a fantastic idea. We need to surround ourselves with happy thoughts and happy words and thankful things. And so I have this box of cards. Um, many of you have sent me cards over the last few years and lots of friends at church have sent me cards and you know friends in the community have sent me cards my children have sent me cards my husband gives me cards and so here's what i did to make mine and it's hanging so i took the fronts of some of those cards so again nothing i had to go out and buy right right nothing i had to go and and source and have shipped to me these were cards that i had i cut the fronts off of them with my paper cutter but you can easily do it with scissors, right? right? Right, right, right. And on the back of the front of the card that I removed, I wrote who the card was from and the date that they sent it. Now, if on the inside there was a really special note or scripture or something that I wanted to say, I cut that and glued it onto the back of the card too. 
And then they're just, I used seam binding tape. Okay, that's what I forgot to say that. Yeah. And, and are yours sewn in there or glued in? They're sewn. Okay, mine are sewn too. But if you can't sew, we could have stapled them. You could have or you could them. glue it and just leave it overnight. You could have used yarn and punched holes and strung Ooh. them on there. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's a good one too. Excellent. It's, I th you can do it however you want. Yours are squared off. We could make a pennant shape. You yep. could make a triangle shape. Yep. And I think it could be for children. It can be for everybody, every single person. I really kind of think I'm making one and hanging it at my, my neighbor across the street. She's 82. And I thought, ooh, I think I'm going to hang that out there. I put signs on their window facing them. Um, I have a couple of neighbor ladies that are a little bit elderly. And they are so happy to get signs like that. But this, it, I don't know why a banner makes you feel like it's so happy. It's just, it's oh, like a party. I love it. I, I do, I, your idea is brilliant though with the cards. That is brilliant. Well, and we all receive cards and we say beautiful ones that touch our heart and soul and make us happy. Just by looking at it, you're like, oh, I remember that person thought of me. That's so nice. It just builds those endorphins in us that make us just thrilled to see them. How lucky are we? And if they're in a box, which is what they were, they were in a box, which was lovely. I was saving them. They were right. in a box, but I wasn't seeing them. Sometimes and I stack them. mine and I tie a big fancy ribbon around them. I don't yeah. look through them. Yes. This it's, idea I'm, I'm like borrowing. We see them, we remember the person, we I smile know. all over again. It's wonderful. So this is going to be my practice by the time I get done. Will it, we, Tom may not have a place to sit on a ball in here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be strong with happiness and goodness. Too bad. Move over. <laughs> we are, I should tell you, we are today. We are not in my normal spot for taping. We're in my art room. So we have our two, my husband and I have our two computer desks in here and there are floor to ceiling shelves that you will not see because they're stuffed with things. And then you will see this that's <laughs> stuffed with things. I'm in my craft room too. And this is the workbench that was in my husband's father's basement. And so this, the Colonel Barrow, this was his workbench and it still has the vice grip thing <laughs> still attached to it. It's, That's it's, neat. It's wonderful place to create and remember him fondly. So what a great thing. Um, I know Daylene has a couple of books or a book or something that she wants. To I do. I have one or two as well. Of course I do. Okay, the first one and that Voskamp we all know or most of us do. Okay, so she's really this wonderful woman that. Gently, not in a mean way, not shaking her finger. She kind of sits beside you. You don't have to read this all at once. It can just be a couple sentences. It could be a paragraph. But she helps us open this idea of making a list and focusing on this list of goodness. Really small things. The, the beautiful color of the bubble while you're washing dishes or your kids laughing or your grandbaby learning to sew. All of those things to keep this list a thousand things that makes you happy and more grateful and that's that theme we have this grateful theme that if we can kind of remember those things and gently tap ourselves on the shoulder to remember how many good things and we get in that habit and that next book I wanted to talk to you about is Sean Aker he wrote this book called the happiness advantage I did not care for the book jacket the dust jacket it was shocking orange and this is orange enough. Well, I guess. Anyway, he taught a class at Harvard. This is more analytical thinking about happiness, but he's the one that said, you're not going to go anywhere unless you write down three things you're grateful for every day. You have to train yourself. We have so many things to be grateful for. Okay, now this lady, her name is Linda Cohen. She lives in Portland, Oregon. Ooh, yes. She wrote a book called A Thousand Mitzvahs. Her dad passed away and her, her religion, she's Jewish, and they have a thing called mitzvahs. It's uh, doing a small kind thing for someone. It's uh, letting somebody in when you're driving. It is holding the door open for someone. It's waving to your neighbor. It's really small things, or it can be a bigger thing, donating to um, a food bank or what have you. Anyway, her plan was, do a thousand mitzvahs that she would write down, even small things, to honor her father. Oh, but at the end of the thousand mitzvahs, she said it just became a part of who she was. 
and she started teaching and talking and helping Girl Scout, Girl Scout troops, uh, big, huge auditoriums of people, anybody that would listen. She was teaching them that we need to keep track of something good that you did today. Something that you did to make the world better and it makes you feel better that you held the door for someone. It, it just, it was a good mitzvah. It was something that, that she wanted her life to be about. It's, it's a wonderful book. It's a quick read. Okay, now this one, my last book is, yay, what would Dolly do? We love Dolly Parton. We love her. Today, she donated a million dollars to Vanderbilt University to I help find her to find some kind of thing that might help us out with some uh, things that are going on today. However, tomorrow night, if you have time and you want to check it out online, she's going to read a storybook every single uh, week. She's going to read a book out loud, and she has a thing called the Imagination Library. She's donated over 150 million books for children zero to five for free. So she did this in the honor of her dad. She thought, I could give away a book for some children. She doesn't have any children of her own. And so she thought, hey, maybe that's the way I could be happy. And she said it makes her almost cry every time she gives a book away and that some little children, some little child gets to have a book that they get to read or their grandma might read it to them or their neighbor or their dad or whoever. Anyway, this book is really great. She has some crummy things that happen in her life like everybody but she talks about choosing happy. And the other thing that kind of weaves through this book as well is she said every day of her life, she's grateful. Her and her husband remember and write down a couple things today that they're grateful for. So no matter where we are, uh, economy in the world, you poor, rich, donating, whatever we're doing, she said, I have to stop before I, before I go on to the day, whatever I'm doing, have to be grateful for something. Find something to be grateful for, and it makes your day a lot happier. Oh, okay, God. those are my four books for today. Those are good ones. I have two. Um, to follow up with the uh, Ann Voskamp theme, <laughs> Yay. 1,000 Gifts was a life-changing book for me. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. That coming from an attitude of gratitude, uh, her use of the term Eucharist Deo, which is that Thanksgiving always precedes a miracle. It was life-changing. Go read it. This is another one of her books, and it's called Be the Gift. Okay, this is one of her later books. I know, isn't it beautiful? Yes. yes. Um, Anne's books are beautiful. Her, her manner of writing is very poetic and really it's soul writing but this book has lots of her photographs does she take the photos she and her family take photos yes um i mean really really beautiful the gist of this particular book be the good gift by ann voskamp is you know we all come from a place of brokenness we've all had hard things in our lives we've we've all got hard things in our lives and we're all kind of broken people. But in the midst of that brokenness, we can become the gift for others and we can become givenness. So the book talks about that all through the book. Then there are the, some journaling pages where you can actually put that into thought and action. How have I been the gift today? And following that, there are 60 ideas for being the gift in action. Ooh, it's amazing. That's good. That's and some good. of them, I'll just, I'll just tell you really, really quickly. Okay, so, okay. Here's, um, look at that. Is that sweet, that little oh, <laughs> It's pretty sweet. Um, it says, wait, number four, wave at every truck driver you see today. They're doing a hard job. They're doing a wonderful job. Wave at everyone you see. Number eight, connect with one person today with whom it's been too long. Number nine, compliment someone today who it would be easier not to. Ugh, ouch. Okay. Thank you for sharing that because now I'm buying that book. Yeah, be the gift. Okay, now the next one. Let me put that down. Ooh, got a bit. 
So my thought has always been that we can't give from an empty vessel. Absolutely. You know, we have to fill ourselves. We have to find some way to bring joy and happiness into ourselves before we can reach out to others. Ann Boskamp and other Christian writers talk about the fact that we need to fill ourselves with our, with our faith, with our creator, before we can spill that love out to others. This book, Creating Sanctuary, okay? This book is by Jesse Bloom. Couldn't remember the first name, sorry. Um, you all know I love gardens and I love gardening and I love quirky kind of things in the garden and lots of fun. This book walks you through how to create sanctuary spaces with what you've got. Oh, that's what we need right now. Right? So many people don't know how to start. This is great. Yes. And again, you know, I'm all about, ask Lynette, she will tell you, I'm all about the pretty. And so this okay. is a very, very pretty book. Okay. Give us some ideas. Is it this? Okay. This floss tube venture is going to be pricey date for me. Cause now I want to buy this book too. Um, so the, the subtitle of it is sacred garden spaces, plant-based medicine, daily practices to achieve happiness and well-being. So it's not just buy this plant for this reason and put it here. It's meditate in your garden. Take a few moments to smell that flower instead of just passing by. It's beautiful. I love that. It, it <laughs> so, kind of, I think the person that wrote that book will think I'm not crazy that I'm going to paint my gate, my fence gate i'm gonna paint it a, i've got two or three color choices idea but i want to make it a, a fun place to kind of sit and look at a, a surprising yes aqua color gate or pink gate or well, oh I, I have that little gnome garden on the side of my house right yeah. so inside the jacket cover it says design a deeply personal meditative space okay learn about 50 sacred plants discover the medicinal properties of plants make herbal remedies and teas at home, practice self-care through meaningful rituals, find inspiration in eight profiled garden havens, and create a 14-day plan to bring you closer to nature. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That is a brilliant idea. But, but it seems like I could, little bits, I could take, bit. it's not a huge overwhelming, yeah. plant your whole backyard or rip up your yard and do this pick and choose and you can maybe read the story about herbal medicine or read the chapter about herbal medicine and just okay. go on that for a while right or you can you know just look at there's kind of a oh i love it i love the way it's laid out yeah so you can say well gee i want to know more about rosemary and look there it is so jesse bloom creating sanctuary you had one oh that's good thank you for sharing Absolutely. Hey, I have to share something with you. I can't, I can't wait any longer. I can smell it. I made you some chocolate pudding. Some delicious, gorgeous, silky chocolate pudding. And I'm using a plastic spoon. Remember in fourth grade when we would sit in the cafeteria and you'd share your pudding with your friend? Yes. That's this kind of pudding. It's so good. It's so creamy. And I made it with honey for you. You're going to love it. And we can have it. Oh man, it smells so good. I tell you what, before we, uh, before we post this video, but after we record it, we'll eat all the pudding. And girlfriend to girlfriend, maybe we could maybe lick the inside of the bowl. I'm just giving a suggestion. <laughs> just a suggestion. We will not be filming that part. No, we will not. Because <laughs> ladies would never lick the inside of a bowl. Heavens no. If you a laugh, you may imagine it. <laughs> Right? <laughs> uh, so we wanted to share a couple of tips with you and I'm going to let Daylene go first because it's probably the best tip I've ever seen in my life. Okay. I have two tips. One really, really great one that makes me happy and one that's okay. I'm trying to grow my broccoli sprouts. This is day three. There are no sprouts yet. Okay. Anyway, it's good for you. You're supposed to eat them. I can grow other sprouts. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with these. 
The top of it is mesh. There's air. I rinse. I shake. I pray over it. No sprouts. You're doing all the right things. Okay, that's not a great tip. Here's my great tip. Yes. These are library cards. We love library cards. Mm -hmm. I've just pulled out three. Just three, not to overwhelm you. Okay. But look what I put on the back of my library cards. A little piece of crusted fabric. And then on each one, this one says 32 count feldspar linen. This one says 28 count mushroom lugana. This one says 32 count vintage light exemplar. We all cut off that little piece when you're done. And I can't, under, I can't see the color. Yes, I can't see the color on the computer very well. And it drives me crazy. So I save a little piece and then I have a whole little basket that I have these and I can just flip through to see the pieces of linen, the color that might go with the threads that I put. You're welcome. <laughs> Is that not the greatest thing I've ever? I'm a visual person, so I need to see it better. I, I know everyone says, oh, this works, that works. I can't see the color very well on the computer. And I've, I've tried different computers. I've tried my phone. I've this makes me happy. This does not make me frustrated. Well, and it's cheap. being a library girl, ah! the idea of having a card catalog of my fabrics <laughs> makes me swoon. Gives you the vapors. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my gosh. You're so brilliant. So I have, a, I have a tip that is nowhere near that. But, you know, lately it seems that we're all washing our hands a lot more, like exponentially a lot more. Like, I feel like I'm washing them in my sleep. And my hands are always a wreck anyway. I don't do my nails. I just have nails like this. Um, because I'm always gardening, I'm always cutting up food, I'm always crafting, I'm always painting, I'm always stitching, doing something that's a wreck, right? So I don't paint my nails and my cuticles are always a mess, but now they look like, <laughs> I, I might be Satchquatch's wife. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I might be. Are you Satchquatch? Mm. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> so this is something that I've done for a long time that I'm doing more now. So you take a lip balm that you really, really like. This happens to be from, perfectly natural soaps and they're in Virginia. And what I love about them is they do perfectly natural. Products. Okay. Um, soaps, lotions, toners, skincare, balms, candles, baby gifts, everything perfectly natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. This happens to be one of their lip balms, but you could use whatever lip balm you have, whether it's a chapstick, a Burke's Bees, something you made yourself, which I've done and you open it up. And instead of going here, you go here on your cuticles. Ooh, brilliant. Because it could be in your purse with you somewhere when you're just sitting there. So, you need, oh, that's a good idea. So every time that we take our car, my, my Jeep in for service, I have to stop and grab all the chapsticks from the center console <laughs> because I keep them there. Yeah, that's a great idea. So this is just a really good tip. And it also helps me feel a little bit more comfortable about showing my hands on the screen. So nice on your hands. Nice. I love it. So we're going to actually, we're this far in and we haven't talked about our stitching yet. Oh, that's right. That's what this was about. I thought so, but you know what? We're having a lot of <laughs> So who cares? So okay. I'm going to show you FFOs, fully finished objects in our stitching. I have, I do have one. I okay. have one. Hold on. Okay. We're going to let Daylene go. Right here. <gasps> it's little. It's little and tiny. It's a little scissor fob. And I made it with a little tomato. Oh, wait. It's two sided. It oh. has a carrot on the other side. The okay. So, darling. so you don't have to buy any special pattern or anything, but this particular pattern is from 2002. Look at how they made them. They were huge. Oh my goodness gracious. I know. Okay. It's called the Fall Fair Sampler by Great Bear Canada, 2002. Oh I, used to work, I used to work at the state fair in the executive offices. 
and I would just type my little fingers away with all those legal things. Someone has to type all those legal papers. We don't, we didn't sit there and eat cotton candy all the time either. Darn. What about think, corn? No, they would bring in scones during the fair, but don't you think everyone would have been a little happier if they had cotton candy and food I so. there? I think so. Sorry, it was my idea. Thinking. It was my idea. All right, anyway, I just, I would collect all of these different patterns from about state fairs. But in here, they have tomatoes, carrots, radishes, I think there's lettuce, pigs, chickens, what have you. So you don't have to buy a certain pattern. Just find one that you already have and just take a little piece out of it. And this was just a scrap of fabric uh, that I had, just, just whatever you have. That's my, that's my uh, fully finished item, a scissor fob. I'd never made one before and I just sat down and did it in one afternoon. I love that idea that you can just take a little piece and it don't have to, you know, find something new and you can use whatever threads are in your stash. Right, right. I didn't use what they said. I just had what, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I love it. Well, I have an FFO too and it is tiny. So here it is. And you may have seen this before. Whoops, I dropped it. This is the uh, Mount Vernon sampler. Okay. And it's a tiny, tiny little piece that I got on our last trip to Mount Vernon. We love it. What size fabric is that? This, the kit came with a 14 count Ada. Okay, okay. Oh, nice job. I like it. So there it is. And okay. I stitched it up and I was thinking, well, I don't know how I'm going to finish this. Maybe I'll put it on a little cheese grater, but that's kind of silly. It doesn't have anything to do with Monticello, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You know, and that's the way my mind thinks. It has to kind of go. So I I put it on a piece of board, mat board, that I covered with an antique scrapbook paper. Perfect. Okay. I kind of inked the edges to make it look kind of, you know, old and crusty, rusty, because antique. So then I have this Mount Vernon thing. What's that going to do with that? It's cute, but it could be cuter. I'm, I got the feeling it could be cuter. So I went to Ma uh, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby, I think Hobby Lobby, and I was walking around. I had taken with me, this is another tip, I had taken with me to Hobby Lobby a folder, a file folder full of FOs, finishes, that I was trying to get inspiration for finishing. Okay, excuse me for interrupting. You keep it in a folder or... Because I put it in like a Ziploc bag, but your folder, you're keeping it flat and you're going to take it around because it's the size you're trying to Correct. see. Okay. Correct. And the whole point of the folder was, and it was a legal size folder, the whole point of the folder was to keep it flat. Flat, right. Okay. Okay. So I'm walking around Hobby Lobby going, bah, 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 and people are looking at me like the ladies in this. Okay. <laughs> Found the perfect thing for the tiny little Mount Vernon sampler. Now, you know, there are lanterns. When you go to Mount Vernon, we did, was it, did we do a Christmas tour? Uh, what did we do? I can't yes. remember. Anyway, we were there and, and there was a beautiful evening candlelight tour and lanterns were lit along the path. It was amazing. So I found this lantern. The and cherries. Oh. I filled it with cherries oh my i feel like i need to get my pearls i'm like clutching my pearls oh my stars i love how your brain works isn't that adorable so it oh, it's, it's over the top adorable it's keeping with the theme of mount vernon but it's something that i really like to have out and you know the black ribbon because they would have the little black ribbon on their little manly ponytails and um two really really brilliant so creative i think it's just precious oh it's charming i i love the cherries open it up and tuck it in there and then lock it back and well done well done i love that thank you it was very fun it was very fun. i love the way you thought and and it kind of you created it with the cherries okay mount vernon's on my list our bucket list and i know well, it, fast forward a year or two and I'm coming your way, but I'm loving the little lantern idea. 
Well, if you come this way, so I, this is a tip for everyone. If you come this way um, and you want to go to Mount Vernon, you should also go to our personal favorite, which was Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello. And if you're at it, why not go to Poplar Forest? And, you know, then you could go to Montpelier and we'll make a trip of it. I love your cherry idea. It Thanks. makes my heart so happy. That whole, that piece makes my heart happy. It's sweet. It really is. Thank you for sharing it. It's so charming. All right. Oh. Now, do you have a finish to show? A not fully finished, but a finish? I don't have a fully finished. That was it. My pin. Okay. I have a work in progress. I do too, but I'm going to show a finish really quickly. And okay. the reason I'm going to show this finish, I've shown it before, I think. But this piece was a retreat piece, a dying to stitch retreat piece last year when Blackbird came, Barbara and Alma came to dying to stitch. Oh, okay. They gave us um, the large retreat piece, but they also gave us a small Friday piece called We Live in Hope, right? Oh, I just ordered this from Acorns and Thread. Yes. So I want it. Oh, that's the one on the back cover? Yes, this is the smaller one. What count did you do it on? Um, it's what came with the, the retreat kit. I think it's 36 count. Okay, good. I just didn't want you to say like 56 or something. No, I think it's 36 count. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Be just and fear not. Yes. It's a good word, right? It's a good word. Uh, oh, 100%. So I the, love it. Your stitching is beautiful. And that's kind of the size just for just the fabric for, color is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it was really a sweet piece and you know, maybe husband and all those things. Yes. So now all of you can get this pattern because oh. Blackbird released it at market and Daylene has it in her heart. I did. I, I got it yesterday or day before. I bought it from Acorns and Thread because I'm trying to support my shop in portland oregon so it's there in a couple months when i'm gonna go and have a glorious day of shopping but yeah she just sent it in the mail it was so nice yeah i love i love that this says we live in hope yes yes i, I love that and they but, probably included the story of the um antique sampler that these were yes. inside there's the picture of the antique one yes and then but the one that you did is the back cover yeah that's the smaller of the two and you changed the date to the date that you finished I it. I did. Um, I just thought I want to remember that they were here and this is when I did it for this time. And Look at that anchor. So did you use the colors that they told you or suggested? Yeah. So when you go to a dying to stitch retreat, everything comes. Your backing fabric, your oh. trims, your threads, Ooh. your fabric, the everything comes in the kits. So I also have everything kitted up for the larger piece. Oh, you do? Are you gonna start that anytime soon? Mm -hmm. We'll have to chat about that. <laughs> I have a big piece I'm working on right now. I, I have to finish that first. Well, and you're working on Savior's Praise. And yeah, I, I just finished one, you're the first person to see it. I finished one, so, one whole side of the border. <gasps> oh, Daylene, it's stunning. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's stunning. I must, it, it's a little large. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I have worked on it every morning for Lent. Uh, two days I took a break because of my hand, but um, the, the ship that's on the side, that's what caught my eye first, and I'm going to save that till the very end. But nice. Nice. it's been a pleasure to stitch on. Um, Teresa from Shakespeare's Peddler designed this and you can tell that a stitcher designed it because there's several places for instance if this house was one stitch over it, it doesn't affect any part of this oh so it's the same with the border yes this one the one solid border does need to meet up correctly however if you are one stitch off on this bumblebee, you can keep going. Yeah. You don't need to criticize, correct, rip out, 
be angry. It's a pleasure to stitch. It really is lovely. Almost every single place in this pattern, you can make a slight adjustment and it doesn't hurt your heart. Keep going. It's a beautiful piece to stitch. It really is. Oh, cool. I love that. But when this is done, are you, are you planning on doing We Live in Hope? I don't know because you know what? Thank you for showing that. I'm so glad you showed that. It is a, a beautiful stitch. And are you starting it on Easter? I'm starting it on Easter with um, Amy Gable stitches and um, Lynette homesteading on the home front and oh, nice. who knows how many other people. But yeah, we're starting it on Easter Sunday, which is actually going to be so, so lovely since we will be at home and I, I'm, I can't think of a better way to start the day. But I'm so nice. glad to have seen yours. Thank you so much for showing Well, that. that's the piece that I spilled the glass of water on, so. Keep moving, keep, keep, go forward, we go forward. I tell you, my daughter-in-law said, oh, I love that fabric. I've never seen one of your pieces like that. Oh, it's a specialty fabric. Yeah, it's special, all right. <laughs> Couldn't tell a thing. <laughs> so do you have a whip? I do, I do. Okay, this piece, I'll show you where I am. Okay, oh, sweet. Okay, everybody has been talking about freebies. Yes, and yes. this particular pattern is from modern, modern folk embroidery. And um, I he had this pattern as a freebie on Valentine's Day. But if you go there today, he has two or three freebies almost every time I've gone there. Wow. So if you're just sitting having a cup of coffee or having your lunch and you want to just flip through, there's always some, I mean, there are some beautiful patterns, yes. breathtaking, huge patterns that are gorgeous. But then there's some real little ones that are just little pin keeps. And I just, I love this one. And the thread I'm using, I don't even think he tells you what thread. He just says, use whatever you want. This one is Weeks Dye Works Brick. Oh, that's a nice color. So I liked it a little bit more than just that. I don't really care for an orangey red. I like a, a darker, deeper red. So, that's um, but that was last night stitching during juice making. So he, Mr. Wright juiced and I stitched. So that, that was probably an hour and a half. That's a lot of stitching for an hour and a half. It's very small. You never change a color. You just keep going. You thread two needles at a time and just pick them up. It was such a pleasure. I'm telling you, I loved it. I, you know, I love almost everything that Modern Folk Embroidery puts out. Such oh. quality in, in the designs and in- Really the, elegant. Elegance, yeah. yes. Yeah, so it's, lovely. yeah I, lo I love- yeah, you'll get in trouble if you go there, I'm telling yeah. you, but you'll I like it. But um, someone, someone gave me a tip about a pattern on there, and last night I got in trouble because I went, what? Huh. And I <laughs> what you buy, girlfriend? I bought that, uh, How Doth the Busy Bee, <laughs> that you told me about. But Didn't you love it? It just looked like you. It was so classy. I loved it. Horrible, and it's less... You know what? I wonder if it's over there. Tom, could you hand me that from the paper cutter, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, it's adorable. And again, it's one color. It's not that large. And it was, when the conversion happened, it was less than $4. Ah, uh, isn't that charming? Is that black or navy blue that it's stitched on? It's got it on black, I think, and gold thread, but I may change that because, you know, I like things a little bit duller. So it may end up being a brown, like r, &R mink or r, r vintage beeswax or something. Really elegant. Yeah. And then look at that border. Oh, isn't it? Ooh, Nelly, that's gorgeous. Oh. A good bee up there. Bees are sometimes not the best, but that's a really nice bee. So anyway, oh. someone sent me down that path. I wonder who that could be. I can't imagine. <laughs> so, um, so my whip, this is what I've been working on lately. And again, we won't talk about how many whips I have because nope, we're not going to do it. So oh gosh, a few months ago, Leanne at uh, 1897 Schoolhouse Samplers put out a pattern and it's a, it's a freebie but it's Louisa Acton, age 11, and it was a sow. 
And so, you know, whoop, whoop. Okay, so basically what she said, she's so darling, such a darling lady. What she said was, here's this adorable small sampler and I'm not giving you any color suggestions. You can do it in whatever colors you can choose. You can do it all one color. You can do whatever you want, whatever you want. I'm not going to list any colors at all and I want to see what you do with it. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I thought, you know, it was the toward the end of a hard winter and I thought, well, I'm going to do it pastel, totally pastel. So I have it on a pink fabric. <gasps> And oh. I'm doing it in, you know, just lavender and blue and- Okay, so you picked out your colors and laid it on the fabric, kind of played a little bit? Yep. Okay, I can do that. I can't pick as I go. No. Okay, so you laid out the colors that you loved. And what I did is um, I have a lot of Victoria Motto sampler shop threads because I was- okay on the monthly club for a while. This is a piece of r, &R fabric in the pink, I think. And um, I opened up my big bin of Victoria Motto, laid out the pink fabric, and kind of pulled some colors that I thought I might like. And then I laid them on the fabric and did the elimination. Of okay, them. okay. That's no good. And then, then you kept those threads with this project and that's what yeah. you're using. And what I've done, oh no, I'm sorry, it's r, r Springtime Pink, and it's 36 count. What I've done is on the pattern, I've written my conversion. Oh, your own chart. Okay, okay. My own chart, because the symbols are in here, but she just doesn't have any colors coordinated with it. Okay, I, I love this, because I can't, sometimes when I hear people say they just pick and pull and shoot. No, I can't do that. I, I don't think I could do that, but you've made your own little... Um, so that you could keep going through the whole pattern. Yeah, and I've written, you know, the hashtags for the Sal right on here so that when I go to post a picture, a picture I was just going to ask you, does everyone pick, post pictures so you can see other people's mm -hmm. that yeah. they've chosen? And the hashtags are hashtag 1897 schoolhouse samplers and hashtag Louisa Acton Sal. And I don't know if you can see that. That's neat. But yeah, so I drew the little symbol and then wrote my colors. Okay, I, I have to, yeah, I would have to do that. Yeah, I okay. love that idea. There you go. You feel very creative or kind of in the process with the, the designer? Or? You know, okay. I do it's, this a lot. <laughs> I change colors a lot. You do, okay. I, I will fiddle with motifs in a design as well. I just did that um, with one of the Be Well and Stitch. Okay. Um, you chose different colors than what they suggested. I did choose different colors and I moved the placement of a couple of things. Um, I do that a lot. Most of the time I don't, but many times I will. And I change colors. I'm a lot like, you know, Amy of Amy Loves Toads talks about how she likes to dull things down a little bit. I, I do that too. I'm not a big, bright girl and I'm uh I'm not a primary color kind of person I like things that look like they like me have a little age on them and <laughs> you know a little rough around the edges and I was gonna say I don't to change colors but listening to the way you're talking about it my savior's praise the color of one of the threads is almost exactly the color of the fabric Oh. And so sometimes on certain motifs, I've just switched to a different color. It's already in the palette. Yes. To brighten it up a little. Sometimes I don't mind because I like leaning into a sampler and looking at yeah. little pieces and real close. But sometimes if it's a bigger flower or a bigger piece that I, I don't want it to look like it's an empty space when I'm farther away, I just switch up with whatever I have on the ring as I'm working on it. So... I love that idea. That's a really charming sampler. You know, we want to tell you about things that make us happy. And one thing that does make me so very happy is Scarlett. And uh -huh. many of you have met her. Um, if, if you're returning to my channel and you saw me at StitchCon, you've met her, you've rubbed her little face and she probably licked yours. And so she is, she is a huge part of my day and makes me very, very happy. 
Another thing that makes me really happy is that it's gardening season. And over here, you will see a couple of tomato plants. <laughs> so I... What kind? Uh, what kind? One is mortgage lifter, I'm pretty sure. The other one is a cherry variety, and I can't remember. We usually buy heirlooms, so... Um, I was unwell over the winter and early spring when I should have been sprouting seeds and doing my own tomato plants. So we've, you know, we've punted. We, you don't give up. You don't stop gardening just because, well, I couldn't start my seeds. We have a garden center that carries a lot of heirloom varieties and we just go there and we buy organic and we buy, you know, everything that we would have planted ourselves. We just buy the plant starts from them or from a local farm. Where is that sitting when we're not doing a video? Where do you keep that? Um, they have been in the garden bed because we have, oh, we have, you got warmer. Okay. We have cold frame ability out there, but last night we had a really terrible, it almost felt like a nor'easter here. Lots oh. of wind, lots of rain. It got cold. So we brought them in, in this bright, sunny window just until it. Warms. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh, that gives me hope. I love that. Isn't is. The yes. thing that's making me happy is that we can still go out. Oh, magical arrival. Magical arrival. We can still go out and exercise, right? So we can still go walking and we can still look around different places. One of my favorite museums in the area is the Hunter House Victorian Museum. Oh, give me five. Oh, yeah. Um, they do some beautiful teas and special events. They had a, a Poe event in their garden where they read from Edgar Allan Poe and dramatized some of his Nice. Poems. Just a really neat place, and we love going there. Well, right now, the museum is closed. And so what they've done is they put out a walk around the block. So Hunter House Victoria Museum is in a uh, historic area of Norfolk, called the Freemason District. And so this is a scavenger hunt for architecture. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't it amazing? And so yes. it's basically meant for families or singles or couples what, to go out. We have the kids home. So you can take them out. They're learning. They're getting exercise. They're noticing the world around them. They're mm -hmm. learning to be observant. And so some things are look up for dental molding. And so then you can talk about, well, what the heck is dental molding? Is that, are there- That's people? wonderful. Um, one says, find a mansard roof. One says, where is a weather vane? One of them actually says, there's a big block down here and it says design a fence. So you can actually- Oh, how great is that? That's precious. Yes, oh, really you. smart. Whoever came up with that idea, I love that. Yeah, so those are what the things that are making me really happy, as well as my prayer flags. So, Miss Daylene, what's making you happy? My front porch. I'm lucky that I have a beautiful front porch. Um, I have rocking chairs. We had a little bit of pollen on everything, so yesterday I spent about an hour out there, kind of wiping everything down, sweeping, getting some cobwebs down. So you can come over and have. Uh, chocolate pudding on the porch. We can we can separate in our rocking chairs. Yeah. And I have flowers out there. And on the inside of my porch, I have stenciled my grandchildren's names. I have some poetry that's stenciled on the inside. So when you drive by my house, it looks just like a normal front porch with the white railing and normal and oh, how charming. It looks like a charming cottage. But when you sit inside, it's a magical place that you get to see all those things. So that makes me really happy. And it, it's all covered and on the roof and the ceiling, uh, I, I painted it. Um, Sorry. Okay. Okay, you painted it. The, the ceiling of the porch is painted paint blue. Uh, when we traveled to South Carolina, I learned about a lot of the porches there that, uh, scare off the spirits and and so that was one of the first projects i did when i moved into this house so i love sitting there i love being covered with the blue sky because i don't live in virginia i live in seattle <laughs> and uh, most days like today is very cloudy very dark and so when i look up all i see is blue sky so that makes me very happy very happy but i have big bump 
uh, fluffy cushions out there and there's a little table so we can set our coffee or tea or pudding. Out of a place to put the pudding. Yes. Uh, on the porch. <laughs> it's a great place. It's, it's a really, really lovely place. It makes me super happy. Um, one of the other things that I have that makes me happy, look what I have. Eggs! Your babies are laying. They're laying eggs. Look at that. I put them in a clear container so you can all see them. But we had some business cards made that just talk about their eggs. And it says, gathered from our backyard chicken, here's to excellent health. And it has our name on it. And we left a couple blank spaces so we could write the date. Uh, uh -huh. So if I drop them off at a neighbor's house, they know what date. Yes. I know that these are fresh, fresh, fresh. And so um, fresher than the grocery store. So, but some of my neighbors like to know how old they are or when I got them. But yeah, I have some really beautiful colors this year. Look at that. That's amazing. Those are Easter eggs without. Yeah, it's without really blood. lovely. And yes, I do blow them sometimes and yeah. I have lined some windowsills, but it's a really fun thing. I don't eat a lot of eggs. Uh, my husband, uh, Mr. Wright does. Yes. However, this project was a project to help me when I was very, very sick. Um, I had a girlfriend stop by and she had secretly talked to my husband. If it didn't work out, she'd come and get them because she has a huge horse farm, a therapy place with, for horses, for people. And she dropped off a chicken coop and three chickens. And she got back in her truck and I said, wait a minute. I don't know anything about chickens. And she said, then I guess you'll have to get off the sofa and learn. <laughs> and so I had to get out of my pajamas and Mr. Wright drove me to the library. I had to get some books on chickens because I didn't know what to do. And she only gave me a little bit of food and she gave me a waterer and I had to figure it out. And the, the food came in 25 pound bags and I couldn't lift it. And I had to drag it over there. And every day I had to go out there and tend the chickens and get fresh air and take care of them. And then sometimes the bag was too heavy. I had to put it in another bucket to carry a littler bucket. And I had to go back out to check if they laid eggs. I didn't know they didn't lay eggs for a while. So I was checking quite often. <laughs> but uh, it helped me get better. And so now, not today, but normally I take the eggs and I give them to the neighbor people uh, friends and it gives me something to talk about and they're happy and they don't complain that my chickens are singing in the morning because they know they get fresh eggs too so that's something that makes me really you happy being the gift as, yay as your friend was a gift to you now that is a good good friend we've been friends since we were four years old oh my goodness gracious She's a beautiful, beautiful soul. She has a huge horse ranch. Um, they have 19 horses and soldiers, people that have some disabilities, they all can come there and get therapy and it helps them. And when I was very sick, I got to go there and feed the horses, apples, carrots. And she was the first person that gave me hope. She said, I need some help sweeping out this barn. The broom is over there. <gasps> And it was the first time I got to sweep and it, I felt like she thinks I can do this. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I tried to do a good job. I don't know how well I did thinking back on it now, but uh, she gave me hope and uh, it makes me so happy. She's, she's a beautiful person. So my chickens give me hope every single day. They make me really happy. They make me happy. Friends, that's what we've been doing today. We hope that we have given you some cheer. We hope that you have um, enjoyed our banter back and forth and our projects and our tips and even my husband's sitting ball and my barking dog. <laughs> we hope that your day is filled with some joy. Remember to um, be creative and to build sanctuary. Yes. And to be the gift, to be the gift. And most of all, jazz hands, everybody. Yay. Jazz hands. <laughs> I'm happy for our friendship. I love you. I Thanks. love you too. Remember everybody, be the grace and the kindness that you want to see in our world. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.